So I guess um first things first because my memory is fresh off of this um historic defeat that Man United suffered to the hands of PSG. Um yeah man, I'm I'm annoyed, isn't it? I'm annoyed. I think most um, United fans who watched that game have to be annoyed because um we were I wouldn't say we were in control of the game, but we had uh, opportunity to win the game and we didn't exactly take it. And that's the most concerning, worrying part of it, right? We had an opportunity to really win. We had an opportunity to somehow grab a something that you would maybe ascribe as a smash and grab and actually give ourselves the best possible chance to number one win at, you know um, qualify from the group of champions as much as other fans are like oh, it's not important I, I think sometimes the momentum and the also psychological aspect of knowing that you finish at the top of your pretty difficult group does a lot for a team going into knockout stages and it obviously would allow this the opportunity to be seeded with the teams that finish second who by no, by any normal circumstance will be the lesser of the best better teams in that group so it's really kind of fucked up the opportunity of course we still have a chance to maybe rectify that with some um combination of results and in terms of the opposition that we had faced we were facing at the time you know with psg obviously loads of attacking talent there's still an opportunity and still op still an opportunity and still moments in the game where you feel like you're gonna get some chances playing against a psg because they're just so open and they have attackers that don't really like defending basically that so i would say we started off the game pretty poorly i think formation wise and lineup i've never really been the biggest scott mctominay fan i do think he has a place in the squad i think he does probably add something that most he, he probably offers something that not a lot of players in our squad can offer in terms of his build in terms of his tenacity in terms of his fitness um in terms of his versatility quote unquote but again i'm not really that sold on his actual ability to play with the football i think his passing range isn't as good as it should be i think his heading ability isn't as good as it should be considering his size his best probably attribute is the fact that he can essentially run up and down the pitch for 90 plus minutes and he also has a pretty decent shot on him outside the box but in terms of playing as a double pivot in front of the back four as he played alongside Fred I just think it's a bit of a wasted opportunity I'd much rather see a, Mat a Matic playing that position or yeah Matic either partnering a Fred or a Matic playing alongside a McTominay if that mean if that you know means any sense because I think they're two very press forward very two press hungry double pivot uh, defenders who are likely to pick up yellow cards pretty quickly in the game and of course that's what eventually ended up causing um fred problems going forward in the match but regardless I, that was probably the only change i would have made um i would have probably played a maybe van der beek in his place um in terms of a player i think the balance with van der beek fred and bruno fernandez worked pretty well in the last previous games i think you could have easily just swapped out fred and put in a match and it would have worked pretty well but again fred has been playing pretty well these last few games so maybe social going to keep up the consistency or the giving the momentum and let him kind of play through his form but i would have definitely picked van der beek in that regard but that aside the, the kind of lineup kind of picks itself for the most part and i think quite soon at the beginning of the game we saw the deficiencies that lie um that we sort of used to as united fans right the fact that we don't have i wouldn't say because again it's hard to it's hard to kind of ascribe it just as a lack of style of play because we obviously do have a style of play we play on a counter attack right but because we don't have any variety i don't patterns of play let's say like in terms of how we get the ball to our strikers there's no like um thing that we do as in like you know give it out wide to set left back let him charge forward bring the ball up into the middle to bring fans him knocks it down there's no like pattern it's just about getting it to the players and then figuring it out as they carry up as they kind of progress further up the pitch that's what it feels like anyway from the outside looking in so because of that we have to just concede possession and I've never really been a fan of that in terms of optics, right? I've never been a fan of United playing at home, regardless of who we're facing, and just conceding the possession of the ball. I think, especially with some of the better sides in Europe, if you give them the ball for the majority of the game, they're going to punish you. And I guess if that is my kind of view of the game it shouldn't be any surprise that PSG ended up winning because they had the ball for longer periods of the game now some people would argue oh it's not all about possession it's about what you do either in the pitch as Solskjaer mentioned in the pre-match comments he said oh it doesn't matter what happens in the middle it's about games are decided either end right our keeper and of course their keeper cool I understand that but with us 
we are more reliant on getting those chances right and finishing them and converting them because we don't have a way of playing that is going to put the opposition side under sustained periods of pressure for a sustained period of time like other top teams do you know when other top teams start cranking up the pressure when it's got a goal to make it 1-1 on the 60th minute we don't seem to have that ability to just sustain that pressure we seem to kind of score goals still with our individual brilliance but it's not a pressure that's being sustained through our team and how we're playing together as a team and again that might have to do a lot with having to play for Bruno Fernandes because we're so reliant on him and because he gets you know his numbers are ridiculous playing for us at the moment but in terms of his actual contributions in the game if he's not able to just do what he does he's pretty ineffective which is kind of a bit of a unfair to say it but he just doesn't look that effective and it, maybe it's because of the position he plays right because he's kind of playing that number 10 position he doesn't really look like a number 10 he's not cute enough on the ball he doesn't hold it well he doesn't dribble that well but he has a very good sort of attitude in terms of getting on the ball he seems to always trying to take a risk going forward which says a lot because I did notice with McTominay a few moments there was one particular moment where McTominay was kind of in the sort of like just outside the area this is when we went under 10 men and he was kind of passing the ball back and forth to Bruno Fernandes. There was a bit of space where he should have kind of probably moved a bit forward up the pitch just to receive the ball in front of the box or outside the box, and he didn't. But he kept still asking for the ball. And Tommy does that often. He'll ask for the ball, hiding behind players, trying to make it look like he's looking for space, but he's not really. So I do credit a lot of brand. I do give Bruno Fernandes a lot of credit for just being that guy who's willing to take a chance, right? Even if he fucks up, even if he misses, even if the pass doesn't go where it needs to go to. But I still think we rely on him too much at the moment because he seems to be the only player who can play without a system, without a pattern. He seems to just be able to thrive anywhere. So he's maybe basically maybe the player that's probably most prone to being successful outside of the level of quality of manager we have i think the other players probably need a little bit more that being said still um i think this game was decided on fine margins i think even though we went a goal behind early we managed to score a pretty fluky deflected goal off the back of rashford he took a bit of a shot in the box and giving it to rashford was a bit of a stretch but i guess because it was on technical and target it went in um and i think diallo um ended up getting the deflection and we kind of got the goal just before half time even though we didn't probably deserve it on the balance of play then we started off the second half pretty slow as well um psg controlled it for the most i'd say for the most of that second half um but then we had a period just after that where we sort of regained control of the game because we got the ball again and because we were able to attack and we suddenly had two really clear-cut chances that fell to mush i would say one clear-cut chance the chance where rashford basically takes it on a wing um Cavani back heels into his path he knocks it into the box and then you're just expecting Marshall to just finish that right because he's one of our best finishers at the club and for some reason he just skies it completely over the bar and you just think to yourself Jesus Christ if if Marshall's missing those kind of chances we're probably not going to win this game um and unfortunately that is what ended up happening and then the second chance which I think was a far more difficult chance to finish in my opinion was the one where Cavani kind of chips is it yeah he chips the ball um over the keeper unlucky not to score it cut it rebounds out and then it somehow ends up to on to be Bruno Fernandes on left hand side and him again unselfishly I think because he wanted maybe to give Marshall an option to rectify his mistake so he kind of cut it back I think if if it was a game where it was nil where it was one nil down maybe Bruno would have taken that shot on the left front, left foot but he still does an incredibly deft flick back into the box gives it to Martial and this is probably a difficult chance to score because the chance gets pushed back to you you have to kind of take on a half volley but still considering Marquinhos is sort of sliding out you would assume the best option will probably be go to high right I would, I would assume I think that you, you get told that in it when you're playing five aside whenever there's defenders kind of sliding across the goal just aim upwards and you're gonna score in it again it's harder it's easier said than being to be done don't get me wrong but he misses that chance and when you consider what Oliver Giroud did on the other side um you know playing Champions League I think Chelsea I forgot who they played away from home but he scored basically four goals 
it does go basically show that this is the reason why a lot of people have doubts about Marshall because of course he considers himself a number he thinks he's a number nine he really wants to be a number nine but quite clearly he's not a number nine in the sense of like being um reliable in terms of finishing every chance not every but finishing those kind of chances right um he does score the chances that he probably shouldn't score we has to kind of beat three guys and bend in the top corner but i think the bread and butter of a striker is the ability to just score those quote-unquote tap-ins and if you can't do that at this level it's just not going to be good enough so uh, you can definitely understand why the uh, martial doubters exist but so aside from that, which I think he has to take some blame from it, a lot of the blame also has to fall on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for not substituting Fred, who was already on a knife edge. Fred, in the first half, managed to get himself in a little bit of a kerfuffle with, um, I'm going to say Paredes or somebody for PSG. He ends up getting into a head-to-head -head argument and leans in and sort of kind of motions to a headbutt, right? In football, you just can't do that. If you do that in professional football, you just have to get sent off. It's just part of the laws of the game. It doesn't matter if you didn't touch the person, there was no contact, any motion towards another player's head um, indicating that you want to headbutt or you want to kind of intimidate them, whatever it may be, it's going to result in a red card. In some lucky circumstances, the referee looks at the screen, comes back, checks it and says, nah, it's all right. It's not a red card, it's a yellow which I've never seen. I've never ever seen a play imita inter intimate or imitate that they're going to go and headbutt somebody and then get a yellow. It just never happens. It's like it's like getting a yellow card for a 240 tackle. It's just, even if you get the ball, you're just going to get sent off in it. Um, I'm sure there's occasions have happened, but for the most part, you know. So that happens, he gets sent off. Cool. Um, so he gets a yellow card. And then you think quite quickly that if you're a top coach, you just take off Fred. There is no excuse. I know a lot of people have been tweaking about it online. There's been a lot of debate, but there should be no debate. You just take off the player because, of course, he's sort of, I wouldn't say he's lost his head, but Fred is a very competitive midfielder. He's not Matic. He doesn't intercept the balls. He doesn't flick the ball off of the uh, midfielder or attacker's feet. He tries to engage whoever he's playing against, right? He's very tenacious. Um, he's very kind of hungry to tackle, even considering how small and slight he is. That's what I kind of like about him. His willingness to really get stuck in. So if that's the case, you substitute that player. There is no option, there's no scenario that makes sense to leave Fred on the pitch with a yellow card in the Champions League against the PSG, right? They have players such as Neymar, Paredes, of course, Marquinhos loves a little bit of a dive, um, a little bit of a roller on the pitch, Di Maria's to, to come on, and again, Ander Herrera's a bit of a shit cunt, and then again, uh, which kind of, you know... Um, crazy luck that we, it would have it in the second half and Herrera ends up being the one who kind of causes Fred to get the second yellow mostly the fault needs to lie to Fred for having heavy first touch which is one of the reasons why a lot of fans have a lot of um, doubts about Fred as a player because he seems to misplace the passes that he shouldn't misplace and then he also seems to sometimes have a bit of a heavy touch when he shouldn't have one and unfortunately if you're playing as a deep landing midfielder there just isn't the room available afforded to you to to misplace a part misplace a bit of control and then get it back without engaging somebody because it's got attackers all around you right you're in a kind of a very volatile position so of course he misplaces that um sorry miscontrols that pass into him and then that leads into allowing Andrea to just to get in front of him and even though Fred if you look at the replay he did touch the ball um before Andrea got onto it it just didn't look good optic wise and again I think I'm um, I think one of the co-referees mentioned it in a commentary that more likely than not the referee did get that decision wrong of not standing off Fred in the first half and he most probably saw that in the second half so he was in his head he was already playing in the referee's head oh man I fucked up so if anything he was going to rewrite that wrong as soon as possible like Fred was on his last warning if he did any tackle that was any millisecond late he was always going to get a second yellow so you would really expect a top class manager to take him off I understand it's Fred but he's not like it's not like Bruno it's not Martial it's not it's not Cavani right you just take him off right of course the players on the bench should be enough to deputize for him Van der Beek the Pogba's they should be enough to do a good job playing in that position or rotating the team whatever it may be he should have come off and the fact that he didn't come off eventually cost us the game because let's say we concede anyway let's say he makes that tackle or somebody makes a tackle he gets yellow but we still concede cool but we have the option 
to play and to counter and to compete with 11 players on the pitch. The fact that we didn't have 11 players on the pitch ultimately led to our demise because obviously there was space at the back. We had to overcommit players in the front. And then towards the end, Neymar was able to finish off a pretty brilliant performance from him all the way around and score a pretty good goal towards the end where he sort of, you know, he get he basically sat Maguire down near the byline, ran into our area, passed the ball out to the wide and then somehow managed to get back into the box and calmly tap into the goal. And we end up losing 3-1. And yeah, man, fine margins in, it, in the Champions League. This, this is what it is. You miss your opportunities, you lose the game. It is what it is. There, there are no gimmies. There are no flukes in the Champions League for the most part. But there is a part of me that thinks because we don't have that style of play, because we're lacking in that sort of ability to sort of engineer chances on a consistent basis, you really do need to just take those opportunities. You just can't afford to let them go because unfortunately, if you're Marshall, if you're Freshford, if you're Cavani, you're just not going to get the same chances that the players playing up front for Liverpool, Man City, even Chelsea get on a game-by-game basis. We just don't seem to create enough and um, because we don't have a system of play. And if that's the case, and if you're a social, you just have to give yourself the best opportunity to win by making sure you have the players on the pit you have enough players on the pitch to do that right so just take off red like make it job easy for you because again we win that game this conversation completely is different because we lost and now we've put all the pressure on this game that we've got against rb leipzig towards the yeah the last game of the group it's just unnecessary pressure really so that was unfortunate in it but i don't know man it it, it, it it's a really hard one because I think most fans know that Oli Solskjaer isn't the guy, right? He's just not the top, top level coach that you need for United to really progress. And I think most people, if they take off their rose tinted colours, glasses know that to be true. But unfortunately, at the moment, unfortunately or unfortunately at the moment, he seems to still be able to get a tune out of these players. But there also is a thing where these players also seem to never really step up when it needs to be stepped up, right? They just always seem to miss it they always seem to come up a little bit short and again some of it might be through the manager lack of system but it's also the players just not taking enough ownership like the defred yellow card like who was on the team that didn't just tell him to calm down when he comes out of second half kept talking to him look relax don't go like just allow the first 15 20 minutes of the second half to go without you even maybe making a tackle or making a contentious one just play calm no one on the team did that and again Kind of, kind of abd, kind of abdic, ad, abdicate, abdicate uh, responsibility, and they sort of always lay the blame on the manager. And I think again, the manager isn't good. Don't get me wrong; he's not the best manager for us. He's maybe the best manager for this moment, but in terms of our long term ambitions, he's not the guy. We we just know it, right? Deep down in our loins, no matter how much people with the numbers try and tell you different and try and make out seem as if like flipping. Um, Pochettino's Tony Pulis whatever let's not get involved in other managers let's say he's not the guy long term but still these players should be doing better right they should be doing better right we're playing PSG we're not playing Bayern Munich like this is a game where you should be losing 3-1 at home like this like it's just embar- a bit embarrassing really but what can you do in it what can you do